Tim, in trying to understand how the world works at its deepest, most fundamental level, I've noticed uh, over the last, I don't know, a couple decades, an increasing interest in the concept of emergence that, um, you know, classically one and one does not equal two, it equals three. There's something more that, uh, that the whole is than the sum of its parts. Um, and there seems to be like two different categories of it, and, and it refers to what can the laws of physics ultimately explain? And are there anything in this physical world that ultimately the laws of physics could not explain at higher levels, so-called special sciences, biology, chemistry, mm -hmm. uh, you know, ultimately consciousness? Right. So I guess I would say um, what the laws of physics, the laws of physics, what physics is fundamentally about is the motion of matter. I mean, if we go back to sort of an old take on it. Yeah. And if you start with that, you say, well, okay, so what I need is, first of all, an analysis of motion. So that gets me to something like space-time. And I need an analysis of matter, which gets me to something like quantum mechanics. And you put those together, and it gives you matter in motion. Any science that is ultimately just about matter in motion in some way ought to arise out of physics. So um, biology, for example, I think you would say, yeah, all biological processes I can understand is just matter in motion in a certain way. Matter, you know, animals move around. You want to explain that. They reproduce. Well, that's a certain piece of matter with a certain structure being produced by another piece of matter with a certain structure. So at, at some very deep level, that's the operation of the laws of physics. The ex exception to that uh, in terms of something that could emerge in the sense of not being coming right out of physics is consciousness. Because consciousness has this character which isn't the character of motion of matter. It has this character of, of subjective, having uh, subjective experiential states. Um, pain, for example, is a subjective experiential state. And if you ask me, how does the existence of pain relate to the motion of matter? Mm. Um, what classically people thought, like Descartes and like Locke, was that clearly there's no conceptual connection, there's no fundamental connection there at all. They always brought in God, as a matter of fact, to say God had to make a law to connect the motion of stuff in your brain with a certain experiential states, and God was absolutely free to make that law whatever because there was no fundamental um, similarity between the motion of matter and pain. So I think consciousness is something that's, that's really a very deep, intractable problem if you think everything can be explained by physics. I don't see anything in biology or economics or the other special sciences, chemistry. Chemistry, in some sense, pretty obviously, right, in right. a certain sense, reduces to physics. Well, the, the, an example that's used classically is, um, at, at, you know, going all the way up the hierarchy, the concept of money. So yep. money is, uh, is, it can be uh, electronic digits on, sure. our, our, on our uh, computers, it can be papers, it can be coins, uh, it can be all, all different kinds of, uh, of things could be right. money. So the, the, the thought is that to, to be able to represent that in the motion uh, or the movement of matter uh, it, it totally misses the... Uh, uh, a, a, a description, a complete description of yep. what money is. So I completely agree that the special sciences and concepts like money provide understanding of things that happen which is not provided by physics. So it's, I'm, I'm not dissing the special sciences. They provide us comprehension. Uh, for example, computer science, if I have a, a computer, it's a physical object, and I could get a physicist to analyze it, and uh, predict what it's going to do on a purely physical basis. Uh, and I might say there's a little spinning colored wheel on my screen and I ask the physicist, what's going to happen here? And he analyzes it physically and gets some very complicated equation and solves it and says, oh, that little thing is going to spin for two and a half years and then it'll go blank. And, the, and then I hand the computer scientist a piece of paper and he says, you know what, your program here, you got a loop in it. Step 10 is go to step 12, step 12 is go to step 10. Of course, your program's never going to stop computing, and so that little disk is going to keep spinning forever. Right. The computer scientist is giving me insight that the physicist didn't. 
Now, in terms of their actual predictions, the physicists will be right and the computer scientists will be wrong. That is, the little disk is going to spin for two and a half years and then it'll go off because something blows out in the machine. <laughs> right, right? Right. The physics doesn't care that it's a computer. The physics works independently of it being a computer. Special sciences involve bringing physical objects under different conceptual categories which provide us a different kind of understanding or comprehension of them. So let's put consciousness aside because I certainly agree that that seems to be a category by itself. The claim right. is still in biology, throughout biology, that there are laws, regularity, kinds, natural things yeah. at, at these levels that emerge in, in a strong way so that in principle those things that happen could never, under the most advanced physics, in, can never in principle be explained by the motion of matter uh, at the most fundamental level. Yeah, so I disagree with you that. Disagree I mean, with that. I mean, take, for example, your example of money. Uh, so someone's going into a store to buy something and they're holding it in their hand and you make a prediction and you say, you know, he's going to take a buck out of his pocket and hand it to this guy, right? Why? Well, because the dollar is money and he wants to purchase it and you use money to purchase things. You give me this whole explanation. I think physics will also, if I could completely physically analyze that situation, right. it will predict that the hand will go into the pocket, it will grasp this bill, the thing will come out of the pocket, and it will go that direction. Yeah, right. right? Physics won't get that wrong. Physics can't get that wrong because physics has a kind of uh, demand on it that no other science has to be perfectly accurate about all yeah. physical effects. Again, we're not, uh, we're not uh, uh, saying this can be done yeah. uh, I I even ever. The question is in principle. In principle. In principle. In principle. It does that? it follow from the that's, laws of physics? Right. right. So uh, does it follow from what you say, if, if we go with you, that the world is deterministic? No, because physics might be deterministic, it might be indeterministic. The laws of physics themselves are either deterministic or not. Right. Both options are open, although people don't understand that. Quantum right. mechanics that. Right. still allows for the possibility right. of determinism. I think we just don't know yet. Right, okay. But whatever physics would be, then everything else would have to follow. Exactly. Okay, all right, now that, that, that I understand. Um, I, I have difficulty uh, personally understanding the claim without invoking some non-physical stuff, which n that people don't do, how there are, in principle, when you get certain physical th things together at the fundamental level, when you bring them together at levels of biology or whatever, mm -hmm. that suddenly you create a, a, um, a condition that could not be predicted from w w uh, by analyzing what was below. Right. They, they happen, and when they happen, boom, there's something new. Am I getting that wrong? I mean, what's the argument on the other side? Um, I don't know what the argument on the other side is, to tell you the truth. Um, I'm, I'm not sure why people would think you need to get something fundamentally new. It, it, back in the, a long time ago when physics looked a little different. They do different. think that way. Am I, am I crazy well, or do well, they think that way? Uh, uh, so the notion of strong emergence, there was a notion of British emergentism, which goes back to the end of the 19th century. And at that point, physics was not so well developed. Right, and and right. so they thought certain chemical properties of things could not be explained physically. Or you had vitalists who said, look at what living organisms right, do. Right. You cannot explain that physically. Right. And the march of physics has just refuted that, right? We understand how biological organisms can reproduce through DNA, and we have a physical structure of DNA. We understand sure. why it can sure. replicate. So I think they, they just didn't understand what the power of okay, physics but, was going to be. But, but there is an increasing movement today among people I respect uh, who believe that uh, at these higher levels of, uh, of, sci of scientific organization or of complexity that yield biology, for example, there are um, things that ha they are there that are in principle uh, unanalyzable in the fundamental physics, even though they say that there's nothing, you know, uh, 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 kook kooky coming yeah. in from the outside. Well, if you, if you have a higher level science that's based in, say, functional concepts, which is really money is like a functional yeah, concept. Yeah. I'm not sure money is the best analogy because yeah. I think money also involves uh, uh, thoughts and, and, and brings in consciousness. So I, I think actually money is a, is a distorting analogy. Oh, okay. So but bio, pure let, let, me, let me take a biological case. So you had a gene theory that existed, say, from Mendel, 
where he didn't yet have a physical model. Right. So what, what were genes, how were they defined for Mendel? They were defined functionally. They somehow had to carry information yeah. about the structure of the parents. They had to segregate and, 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 and reform in the child, okay? So those are kind of functional considerations. Now, all kinds of physics could support something that does that. Physics that's not like the physics of our world could support something that does that. Uh, in our world, we figured out, given the physics of our world, we figured out the things that do that, right? DNA molecules and why they have a structure that allows them to do that. So in some sense, these functional concepts are broader reaching than anything defined in terms of, present, of ex actual physics, because they actually cover things that, that, that are not covered by actual physics. But the existence of them doesn't imply, the existence of actual genes doesn't take us out of saying there's more to reality than physics in some sense. They're just non-physical descriptions it's of a, physical it's, objects. The question is, in, in seeking the fundamental laws of how the world works, do you need more ultimately than fundamental physics itself? Putting right. aside consciousness. Right. So, yeah, I think the only fundamental laws there are, and in fact the only strict laws there are, are laws of physics. Insofar as you talk about laws of the special sciences, they're not strict. They admit of all kinds of uh, exceptions. They can go wrong. They can give you bad predictions, and that's okay. And if you go to a doctor and he says, according to medical science, you're going to live another 20 years, and you walk out the door and a bus runs you over, uh, it's not that you violated, right? His prediction is wrong. You haven't really, you know, the, the laws of medicine, insofar as you think of such things, haven't really been violated. You just say, well, as a, as a doctor, that wasn't my job to predict that, right? This is the difference between physics and everything else. Every other science can say, that's not my department, right? Something happened there. I'm doing chemistry, that wasn't chemical. I'm doing biology, that wasn't biological. I'm doing economics, that wasn't an economic structure. Everything that happens is physical. So the physicist has no realm of saying that's not my department, right? If something messes up their predictions, they've got to change physics.